Have you ever dreamed about having a DeLorean just like in a movie Back to the Future where you could go back in time and tell yourself all the things that you might need in the future? Well that's kind of what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to share my biggest learnings over the past 5 years of my career and these things are not purely technical but nevertheless very important if you want to jumpstart in your career as a software developer. And they are also not sorted by any importance. The first learning is as important as the last one so make sure you stay till the end of the video. And with that said, let's get started. If you are at the very beginning of your career, you probably have already googled things like a day in a life of a software developer or what is it like to be a software developer? And you probably found some videos on YouTube where they portray a very relaxed lifestyle, people making six figures and are almost financially independent. Well, unfortunately, that's not completely true. But things that I'm going to mention in a minute can in a way help you reach that success as a software developer in a shorter time span. And with that said, here's the first learning. Degree. You probably have heard different opinions from your family members, from your friends on this topic, but trust me, as a person who has a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in informatics myself, I was very disappointed to find out that 99% of the employers that I had an interview with did not even care about my diploma. Only two places in Germany where I have been interviewed were curious about it, Audi and Fraunhofer Research Institute, which actually invented the MP3 format. So what I'm trying to say with that is that nowadays you don't really need a degree to be successful. You have all the free material on the internet and even on YouTube. Just Google the MIT courses. How awesome is that? You don't even have to be an official MIT student to watch them. And everything that is needed for either being a data scientist or a web developer, doesn't matter. You can still easily find everything on YouTube. Just pick a course, watch a video, repeat, and there you go. By repeating, you will probably have some mini projects on your GitHub account, which is again, more valuable than your degree problem solving and soft skills. Yes, of course, as developers, we are natural problem solvers. For example, when debugging something, this is literally solving a problem. But most of the times we work in teams and we are social creatures, which means you will spend 50% of your time working with other people in your team. And working in a team, being a good communicator, a team player is something different than coding. If you are a purely technical person and are not able to find compromises, get along with your colleagues, support and mentor them, then most likely you will be mediocre and not successful. Quality or quantity? What I'm trying to say with that is at the beginning of your career, you're probably super optimistic and you want to learn new languages every week. But here's a catch. It's much better to be a master in one language than to be average in 10 languages. Because of course, five, 10 languages, it's super hard to remember everything. And pro tip, you don't have to remember everything. You also need to be good at Googling. So my recommendation is just to learn two languages. In my case, it was JavaScript and Python. Since I'm a web developer and I use JavaScript on a daily basis, and I've also done my master thesis in Python. On top of being good at two languages, you should also know how to use different data structures in those languages, and of course, learn how to solve algorithmic problems. Because hey, imagine you're being interviewed and you are given a complex task to solve. You should probably know which language you're gonna be using for this. Small companies first. I'm gonna give you an example. If you are using an Apple product, you probably know this app called Notes. It's a really simple app where you can create, delete, and edit notes. But did you know that Apple has a whole full-time team working on this app? Teams at such large companies usually focus on particular things. And if you're a member of this team, you will probably be working on a small project with small features, not much technological diversity, and lastly, decision-making freedom. Whereas in small companies and startups, you are literally responsible for everything. Sometimes even marketing, even if you're a software developer. Yes, this might sound funny, but your contribution in small companies is huge. Whereas in large companies, your contribution is just a fraction. Therefore, your growth is also bigger in small companies since you're covering so much. If you're a backend developer and there are not enough people to do the frontend, you might still take over the frontend. And as you progress in your career, trust me, all these things that you have learned in small companies will come in handy. This is why a lot of people leave large companies and start their own businesses because in a way they kind of miss this feeling of big responsibilities. Your mental health. 
five years as a software developer and probably the most important thing that I learned is that you need to take care of your health. Please, please pay a lot of attention to this from early on and maybe someday in the future you will thank yourself. People simply don't pay enough attention to their health in our industry. And unless you have a standing desk, you will most probably be sitting in one place and coding and staring at the screen all the time. This of course badly affects your eyes, your posture, your blood circulation. And imagine spending 10 years like this. Yes, you might be successful in your career, but does it really matter if you're unhealthy? If you keep having an unhealthy healthy lifestyle and have overtimes also speaking of overtimes don't work overtimes ever unless there's something really critical going on which is actually bad because you have eight hours to do your job and if you're working overtime and don't have enough time to relax for the next day you are doing something wrong so what i'm trying to say is please make sure your health has the same priority as your career so these are my biggest learnings if you have learned anything throughout your career so far please make sure to post it in the comments. By doing that, you will basically add your points on top of mine, which will make this video even more useful. Hope you liked the video and actually let me know in the comments below if you have any video requests. I'm wishing you a nice day and goodbye.